I don't think there's ever been a contest like this before, like win in architectural practice. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running and managing an architectural practice that lets you do your best work more often. Today, we have a very unique topic, and the topic is this, how you as a listener can win an architectural practice. Yes, that's right. Maybe you already own a practice, or perhaps you're thinking about wanting to own your own practice someday in the future. Today, Ryan and I are going to be discussing an opportunity for one of our lucky listeners, a lucky audience member, to actually step into ownership of an architectural practice. Without further ado, here is today's episode. Ryan, so we're here in this episode to talk about a crazy hairbrained idea that came up about, well, it's actually been fomenting in my mind for about a year. And and this this is going to sound crazy to those of you who are listening. Uh, my friends and colleagues, especially my business colleagues, have called me completely crazy. But the idea is about us here at Business Architecture actually buying and running and managing an architectural practice. Okay, so both Ryan and I, we've gotten out of full-time architecture over a decade ago. Um, but there's something different between being a consultant uh, for a practice as opposed to actually being in a practice, right? Actually owning a practice, having, having, having something personal on the line in a practice. So when we talk about investing in an architectural practice, what, what are we talking about here, Ryan? Why would we do such a crazy harebrained thing? I don't know, Yank. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, 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 th- I think it's it's. Um, we're very confident in the things that we teach, and the things that we've discovered, and have seen working. We've seen so many interesting things working for, for, lots of different architecture practices, and there's repeatable processes and principles at play that can work in the majority of architecture practices if the right people are in place the right culture is there the right mindset is there yeah i mean and i there's this, a, there's this will pen- be the first fully transparent case study of running an architectural practice ever yeah and I, and i i think being able to document all the all the warts and all of the challenges and all of the cuz it's not you know there's there it, it, there's friction involved in implementing any of this stuff. Absolutely. There's upset. Yep. There's difficulties. There's ups and downs. There's emotions. Okay. There's people involved. Right. There's friction. That's part of the beauty of it. And I think being able to document and show that as well, show the reality of it, and also show the fruit at the end will be a massive um, learning for ourselves. Um, as well as everybody else who wants to kind of join the journey and watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is an opportunity as well. As, as as well, as well. The, Sorry, Ryan, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, as, as well as like, you know, having a kind of almost like a reality TV show behind the scenes yeah. of an architecture practice. That's, what, Ed, that's of, a good way to think about you know, it. We're going to launch a reality TV show showing the running of an architectural practice. And we're going to show all the foibles. We're going to show all the mess ups. We're going to show how... You know, timelines get sabotaged because the consultants don't get their drawings done on time. We're going to show how contractors try to slid, slide these change orders through and try to find holes in the drawings. Like, we're going to expose it all, and we're going to put it out there in the open. We're going to put it on YouTube. We're going to make videos about it. We're going to share all the learnings here openly on the podcast. I I, I don't think anything like this has ever been done before, Ryan. Has it? Have you heard about anything like that. this being done? No, not that I know of. And it's when this is one of these things that we've been saying to our clients, you know, you should do this. You should document the whole process. You should yeah. show the reveals. Yeah. And then of course that doesn't that doesn't often happen. So Yeah. We let's we do took it decided to take matters into our own hands and fine, we'll do it let's ourselves. Take, let's <laughs> take our own let's take our own medicine. <laughs> we'll take our own medicine. So just to give those of you listeners uh, the little background because this this is uh, we we believe this is gonna be great value for you, whether you run a practice, whether you're an employee right now, whether you wanna start your own practice in the future. This would be a chance for you to see very clearly about what works and what doesn't, uh, how we're resolving the challenges. And this idea came about at the beginning of 20, what is it, we're 2022 right now. Uh, The idea was brainstormed back at the end of 2021. November of 2021 was when the first idea first came to me. 
And a little shortly after that, the beginning of 2022, I posted a, a video on social media that I'll put on the end of this episode. We can tack it on here so people can hear it. But it basically put it out the idea. I put the idea out there on social media. And originally what we were looking for is we were looking for a firm who wanted to bring us in as a managing partner, so to speak. In other words, a firm who they wanted to focus on the architecture and they wanted to have someone else come in as the manager of the practice. Right, And so we had a couple of interested firms reach out. I was in talks with uh, one of the firms. We had several meetings. Uh, We traveled on site to talk with the firm to look at what a potential JV might look like. And those eventually those talks all fell through. So we continued our search. And this is part of the process, right? This is the, this is like behind the scenes. Everything, it doesn't, it doesn't work right out of the gate. Right. Mm-hmm. So in my own head, it was, you know, there's there's a, a lot of risk here from from our side, from my side, uh, investing in a practice. You know, some of my business mentors and colleagues and other people in different industries say, Enoch, if you're going to invest money, why would you ever possibly invest it in an architectural practice? <laughs> there's lots of more profitable places to put your money. But for us, it's not about the m- money is not the primary consideration here. Right. For us, it's about the learnings. It's about sharing the contents, about having a platform to help you see behind the scenes of conversations that just aren't happening right now in the open. So a little bit over about about four months ago, I get a call from one of the consultants on our team who does all of our merger and acquisition deals, who does our owner buyouts, who does our ownership transitions. And he says, Enoch, because I told him I was looking to a firm, either a firm who wanted to bring us in as a managing partner or a firm that we were going to acquire. And acquiring had a few benefits, but also being a managing partner had a few benefits. Uh, the way I saw it, Ryan, I'm interested to know, you're, we can talk about openly about the feedback here, but you know, as a managing partner, if someone else, here's the thing, what we find most architects are very precious about their practice. And so you know, I was talking to uh, the same, the same consultant who's worked with a lot of very high profile practices and I said that we were looking for a firm where we could uh we could come in as a managing partner and team up with and take an equity stake in the business really be partners in the in the firm to help it grow. And he kind of chuckled and I said is there anyone you can recommend and mind you this architect has run seminars this architect knows hundreds and hundreds thousands of architectural practice owners as well as engineering firm owners and he chuckled and he said I can't think of a single architect that I would recommend for you to do that with. (laughs) I have slightly more faith in architects than that. But one of the disadvantages of coming in in that kind of arrangement, of course, as a managing partner, if you're coming in as a managing partner, is that you're dealing with a partner who may have to see things very differently. And so it would be a tug of war between the artist and the business aspect of the firm. And let's face it, when you're not a majority partner, you have very limited ability to make change happen. And that, uh, you know, layer that, that on top of applied. running an architectural practice, it starts to look very, very difficult. Yeah. Right. That becomes a complex situation. Yeah, it becomes very complex. So there, that was one of the cons of coming in as sort of the managing partner kind of JV model. Uh, one of the benefits was we could sort of ride on someone's coattails. So someone else has done the hard work. They've gotten a certain point in the practice. All they need is a little bit of uh, our secret sauce that we have here at Business of Architecture to organize things, to implement some good project management systems, to really take what they've done and put it on, uh, supercharge it, so to speak. Right. So that would be one of the advantages. Of that scenario. Now, the other scenario, acquiring a practice, the disadvantages of that is the risk is all on us, right? Primarily me and the entity that we form to acquire the practice. Um, So that's a huge financial risk. There's also risk in terms of it failing because if it fails, then that's completely on us as owners of the practice. There's going to be a financial toll. There's a toll in terms of time lost. Um, So those are some of the the negatives of investing in a practice. It takes money out out of pocket, right? Uh, but then the the advantages would be that uh, we have complete freedom. We have carte blanche. It's a tabula rasa to be able to, because we have majority ownership in the practice, we can then, uh, you know, we're not having to have a tug of war with another personality uh, over how to manage the practice and how to achieve the goals and the vision uh, for the practice and for the team members. Did I about summarize it there, Ryan? Or can you think of either, either any pros or cons for either of those two scenarios? Well, I, I think the the acquisition has, like you say, there's more control, there's more ability to uh, get very 
precise with the direction and the strategy and the leadership and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, there are there are architects that I would would like to invest with, or I could see, you know, successful really? practices. <laughs> well, again, some of some of our own clients, I think, would be yeah, you they're know, absolutely uh, they're, yeah, they're they're have done really really well, and you'd feel very confident and comfortable, kind of, kind of um, helping in that in that aspect. But I do like the i the idea of kind of bringing something and you know uh crafting it from the inside if you like business wise and being able to actually test out all the ideas that we've that we've discussed and that we implement with our own clients um and actually just show and show the real mechanisms of those things working i think that in itself is a massive asset i think the documentation of such a process in itself is a marketing asset for the business that we would acquire indeed indeed yeah. i think it i think it would, would would offer complete transparency and bring about a lot of it would be communicating a lot of the you know the, the conversations we've had previously about value and demonstrating that we 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 understand that and it would provide either shock and horror for a prospective client or or a lot of confidence and i Absolutely. suspect that it would be it, it would be the latter Absolutely. So let me jump back to my story. So this consultant reaches out to me, the guy who does our mergers and acquisitions, owner buyout, uh, buyouts and ownership transitions and says, he says, because uh, I told him we were looking for a firm to either acquire or invest. And he says, so he sent me a couple. We kind of looked at them. None of them ended up turning out. And then he calls me and he says, hey, Enoch, um, it was a Friday. He says, Enoch, are you available to speak? Well, I was all booked up that day, and I said, I can't speak today, but I can speak tomorrow on Saturday. He said, okay, let's let's have a call. Um, 6 a.m., so I got it bright and early. I mean, it was a Saturday, but I thought, you know, he's really got something here, so let's figure out what, what this is all about. He says, you won't believe this. He said, but there's a firm that I've been working with in the past, and they were interested in selling their firm, and they've just called me, and they're interested in selling the firm again, and they're uh, they're in the same town in which you live. <laughs> now I don't want to I don't want to get too specific about the firm or the the exact area in which this firm is at or which firm it is because the deal isn't cinched yet and it may not work out ultimately because we're going to do our due diligence. But right now we're in talks with the firm that's local to me where I'm at here in California. Uh, the owner has run a successful practice uh, as an owner operator for the past 25 years plus. Uh, the firm has a design pedigree, so it actually is, has been published and gotten awards for their design work. Um, so they have established client base, and this is this is what we're moving. So we wanted to update the podcast. Those of you who listen to us about this is what we're doing from our side. This is what you can expect, and this is going to be an opportunity for someone. So there's one person out there who may be listening to this podcast. Where I obviously I don't want to step in to run the practice myself. Like we're business people, meaning we bring in the people who will run and manage the practice. We're going to consult. We're going to provide all of our tools. We're going to be able to provide resources like marketing resources, business development resources, uh, financial management, accounting. So we'll handle uh, all I the thought, back I thought office. we were going to be learning. I thought I thought we'd be learning Revit. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the drafting table. <laughs> Heavens no. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that. This... <laughs> Ryan, it's every now and then architects do ask me, and I know probably all of them think it, and um, they always ask me, is like, Enoch, do you still do architecture? Or Enoch, what is it like not doing architecture anymore? As if I miss it. And I get that. You know, they almost they almost pity me as is, oh, you've gone over to the dark side or or how could you have left architecture? You know, it must be life must be miserable for you now that you're not doing architecture. <laughs> so to make a long story short, no, I'm definitely not miserable. And, um, you know, one thing I discovered is that there's a place for everyone. So there's a place for architecture, architects who love design work. There's a place for architects who love doing specifications. And there's even a place for someone like me who loves the office management, the business side of architecture, and is happy to let someone else do the design. So this leads us to the opportunity here, which is for someone, we will be running a, what do you call it, um, contest, you might call it a contest for someone who basically wants to win an architectural practice. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a contest like this before, like win an architectural <laughs> practice. 
<laughs> so we're looking for the right fit, the right person who wants to partner with us. Basically, we're going to bring you in. We're going to set you up as the manager, the principal of this practice. Uh, you'll be able to get ownership in the practice. So basically, you'll be able to step, walk into an ownership position in this firm. Uh, but it's going to have to be for the right person. And it's a huge opportunity because you're going to be able, maybe you work right now at another firm and you may have thought about starting your own practice or you want to have the flexibility, you want to have a higher income, you want to be able to chart your own future. This is the person who gets this opportunity. That's what they're going to be able to step into. They're going to be able to step into a practice right now that's an, a wonderful asset that's underutilized that has a design pedigree, that has a good team already in place, that has a good client list, you're going to be put in as, as the principal of the practice. You're going to get all the fame, all the recognition, all the uh, whatever you want. You, we can create your vision there as you and us work to build this practice and make it something incredible for the team members that work there, for the clients that it serves. Really, our goal as a business of architecture team is to create a gem and a case study of how a well-run practice should be run in the service of clients, in the service of the team members, you know, paying exceptional salaries, in the service of the owner. So if you think this might this might be for you, then you can go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash firm and you can fill out an interest form. What we'll do is we'll put your name on the list and we'll keep you informed as this progresses. Uh, but uh, I mean, this is the kind of opportunity, Ryan, that I would have loved to have heard about when I was starting my firm. Instead of having to start something from scratch through my own blood, toil, sweat, and tears, or perhaps mm -hmm. buying something from someone else and then trying to figure out how to manage it on my own, but actually stepping into an existing practice with mentors and coaches and funds behind me to help help make sure it succeeds. Oh, man, I would have loved an opportunity like this 12 yep. years ago. And the and the and the you know the documentation of the whole process and the creation of marketing assets yeah. and being able to be story. a part of this really once this is like the first time this has ever been done as far as i know like where uh, like we said someone has documented the forming of a firm in such a public way so if this is speaking to you, you know what to do. Head over to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash firm. couple caveats. You will have to move to Visalia, California. Okay, you will have to be local. There's no, This is not a remote position. Uh, but the beauty of that is Visalia, California is a fantastic place to live. Number one, especially if you have kids. If you're like the big city person who's living in a studio and you want to go nightclubbing every weekend, I'm sorry, this, this opportunity is not for you. But if you're at the stage of life where you're maybe mid, you're mid-career, you have experience, um, you have kids, you want to raise them in a, in a nice place to raise kids. The beautiful thing about where I live here in California is we're about an hour and a half from mountain, like beautiful forests, the giant sequoia trees, mountains, and pristine lakes for fishing, for hunting, for camping, for mountain biking. I mean, it literally looks like you can be within an hour and a half, you can be in some place that looks similar to the Swiss Alps. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Or, Does it have to be um, a, a U.S. green card holder? Yes, yes. You'll have to be U.S. National. and preferably California. So this is going to limit it in terms of who can apply. I'm glad you asked that, Ryan, because um, you'll have to have a specific expertise. So we'll talk more about this as, as we progress in talks with the firm. I don't want to reveal too much about what niche they're in, what market niche but um, you will have to have experience in this area. But go ahead. If you have any, you know, if you have any interest at all, fill out the interest form. It won't hurt. Um, Vice is a great place to live. We're two hours away in the other direction. We're two hours away from beautiful, pristine beaches. So if you like surfing, if you like sailing, you like windsurfing, you just like running along the beach. We're three hours. You can be to Los Angeles. So obviously you can you can attend that. You know, we have Fresno is not too far away from here. We have Broadway shows in Fresno. So there's really a lot of cultural things here. There's great food. There's great cuisine. We have a lot of local produce because this is a farming area. So it's in a pretty amazing place to live. Plus, the best part is we have a Mediterranean climate here. So it does get pretty, it can get pretty hot in the summertime. But the winter, I feel like it's cold if it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a little Aww. plug just for Vicel. I just want to throw that out there. But the big reveal that we wanted to talk about on today's episode was just to let all of you know what we have in store. And we want to keep you updated as this, as this, as this uh, process goes along. I've met with the owners of this particular firm 
three times now. So far, we have a soft verbal agreement in terms of a yes that we want to proceed. But the next step is we're going to look at the finances. We're going to look at the amount we're going to pay for the buyout. We're going to look at the legalese, and we're going to formulate the structure. So we still have to continue the negotiations. So that's sort of where we're at right now. Very exciting. It is. And in addition to that, what we'll also be doing is we'll also be... Um, We'll be cataloging and recording the acquisition process because later after the deal is done, then we'll turn that into content that we'll share so you can see how this how's this process um, progressed. I think that will be really, you know, this is this is something we've worked with clients who have either gone through the merger process or they've been looking at acquiring another company and the valuation of a, of a business. You know, this is this is really interesting, fascinating stuff. So to be able to kind of break it all down, just be completely transparent with it, you know, show the process behind how companies get valued, how the valuation price or the sale price gets agreed upon, yeah. how that you might, you know, BOA will have one set of valuers, the sales, the vendor might have their own set of, of, of valuations and coming up with a with a price in the middle. And also, you know, we were talking about negotiations and value. And being able to, you know, what what are what are the key performance indicators to be looking at? What are the metrics to be understanding? I think it's going to be very very interesting, very interesting, and also provides a lot of value for for anyone running a business in terms of, you know, what where should we be focusing on making our own company valuable? Absolutely, absolutely, especially nowadays. Um, and there's there's another opportunity here for you know there, there's this hidden gold mine Ryan of architects who are in their golden years so to speak or they've built something really valuable over the past 25 to 30 years and they're looking to uh, they don't want to let the legacy die they're looking to be able to get some reward for all of their hard effort and so there there's an amazing opportunity right now for people who want to step into ownership positions and firms that are already running without having to start up something by yourself. So we're going to be sharing some more information about that opportunity as well. Um, if you currently work in a practice and you want to be the owner, but you know it's going to be years and years and years before you ever get put in that posi- position, mm-hmm. uh, one of the easiest ways to get in a management position to give yourself more time, freedom, flexibility, greater income is to be the owner of a firm. And today it's more, it's easier, it's more, I can still believe my words, it's easier than ever before. <laughs> Because there's a lot of firm owners out there right now who are looking for a solution and um, you might just have, or looking for, you know, yeah, they're looking for a solution to their problem. So Ryan, you haven't been directly involved so far in these negotiations. Do you have any questions for me about about this process that we just kind of want to um, share as we, as we button up this episode? No, I mean, I'd be interested in kind of looking through the financials with you yeah. of the, of the business and kind of getting clear on well, what would be you know what would be the what would be red flags yeah yep that'd be the first question what yep. what would be the red flags what would be the things that will are going to be deal breakers yeah mm. and also from our from our perspective you know how what are the risks yeah. and what what will we be doing to mitigate them yes yes exactly stay tuned for that and more all right i'm excited yeah. and that's a wrap Herrick Tech Nation, if you haven't already headed over to iTunes and left us a review, we would love a review of this show. We're always looking to improve it, and your feedback matters. I want to give a shout-out to three people who have recently left a review on the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you. And uh, when you do leave a review, we will mention you here as a token of our gratitude. So big shout-out to Nico Corbo, Victoria Boa, and Pablo Quintana. Thank you for leaving your thoughts and for supporting the Business of Architecture podcast by leaving us a review. Review. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, the world's leading step by step business training program that's helped more than 103 architecture firm owners structure their existing practice so the complexity of business doesn't get in the way of their architecture. Because you see, it's not your architecture or design skills that's holding you back, it's the complexity of running a business, managing projects and people, dealing with clients, contractors, and money. So if you're ready to simplify the running of your practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart to discover the proven, simple, and easy to implement smart practice method for running a practice that doesn't get in the way of doing exceptional architecture.
The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.